name is Anthony Walsh. I'm a law student and uh, author of Hockey for Everybody. How did you fall in love with hockey? It's a really great question. So, um, you know, uh, traditionally, we don't always think of people of color, black people, right, playing hockey. But um, so I was adopted from Washington, D.C. and then to Minnesota and then started skating when I was three years old and playing hockey when I was four. And part of that was my brother seeing uh, this group called the Dynamites, which is actually still a program today in the Minneapolis area. But back in like 1999, they were receiving an award and um, at Park Avenue United Methodist Church, which is where my family went to church and my brother saw these young black boys, you know, getting some award for hockey. And he was like, oh, I want to play hockey. And then in turn, me being the younger brother by five years, wanted to do whatever my brother was doing. So I started playing hockey and, you know, that's kind of, you know, the rest is history from there. But yeah, you know, that's how we got into it as a family. We weren't traditionally, my mom or dad didn't grow up playing, but, um, you know, when in Minnesota, right, you end up in a pair of skates on your feet and, you know, taking off from there. So that's how it got started. So what is it for you when you put on the skates and get in, get on the ice? I would say it's the, uh, the freedom, right? Like it's the fastest sport on two feet, uh, which is, uh, you know, incredible or, uh, just cause yeah, it's, it, there's nothing like flying around on the ice and, you know, hidden if you, you know, can, can hit in boys hockey, right. You know, checking and, uh, you know, finding a way to, you know, get by a hit or passing to your teammate, right. You know, when they're open shooting, you know, into the puck into the net yourself, right. There's just no greater, um, you know, sensation than that. And then also that idea of a common goal, a common struggle, you know, you and your 16, 18, 20 people that are on your team are, especially during uh, association hockey, right? Like you're, you're, you know, struggling right. towards this common goal of wanting to win a state championship or districts or, you know, whatever that kind of is for, for your team at that time. But um, yeah, it's can't be beat. And I just have so many great memories and, you know, from that. And cause I don't really play competitively anymore. I do more coaching on the side and uh, kind of, again, author and law student stuff takes up a lot of my, a lot of my time, but um, hockey has been so important and, you know, giving back has been such an important part of that as well to everything that I've been doing. Can you tell me about hockey is for everybody? Yeah, of course. Uh, so it's a semi-autobiographical book in a way. And it's these experiences that I had had growing up playing youth hockey in Minnesota and uh, just taking those and kind of molding them into one readable story for children, for adults to kind of take and, to, you know, be able to take a lesson from that. So it's um, kind of again autobiographical in a way. So this story centers on Anthony, who was a young um, black kid on his hockey team. And then Matt, his best friend and teammate, who is also like a real person in my life. I grew up with a guy named Matt Nelson on my team. He's a very good friend of mine still to this day. Um, and just the idea of, you know, these two guys, what allyship looks like. And then the antagonist, Jason, who is on the other team saying things like go back to the basketball court and you don't belong here. And why aren't you shooting hoops and like stuff like that, which is, um, stuff I would get really quite commonly when I was on the ice. And, um, you know, a lot of times it wasn't necessarily the hard R, you know, racism or anything like that, but a lot of it was more of those microaggressions. So kind of, uh, you know, casting light on onto that and how that is wrong in itself as well. Um, I, it's changing for sure now, but when I was definitely younger, there was a consensus of, oh, there's, you know, a line that can't be crossed maybe, right? And that I think that's just, you know, a fallacy, right? There's no line at all and there's no, room in the sport for that kind of stuff and that's really what this book is about is you know to try and um you know highlight again you know some of these darker issues but then the positivity of here's allyship like here's how we can actually identify this problem own it and then move forward and you know that's what that looks like so um I, you know it's a great message all together right about how you know it's going to take all of us you know to get through this it's going to take the people that are um, you know, experiencing that kind of discrimination. It's going to take the people that are the allies who are not necessarily experiencing it, but, you know, with them on that journey. And then it's also going to take the people who have, you know, perpetrated that kind of stuff to, you know, potentially right, see it wrong and open their hearts. And then to all want us to get together to really create that space for healing, you know, is what the answer is going to be moving forward. It can't just be one person, you know, telling their story um, and then, or, oh, okay, just one ally over here trying to do the right thing or one person that's repented, you know, from, you know, some of the stuff that's happened. No, it's got to be all of us, you know, together and moving towards a more um, concise, clear goal of what it looks like to be a diverse country and a 
very strong country because you know we know that diversity only brings strength so yeah. um what that looks like ultimately well with your books and podcast and i don't know how you have time for everything but uh and especially you know coaching uh how important is it to show positivity in hockey for the next generation i'd say it's you know the the most important thing ultimately right um, if people aren't having fun, they're not going to show up to the rink. If people aren't showing up to the rink, you're not going to have hockey games. You're not going to have practice. You're not going to, um, you know, we, I think that's something big as well right now is we're trying to make sure that, right, the etiquette in the rink is changing a lot as well, not necessarily with race or whatever, but it's also just how we treat people as human beings. So hockey parents, how they treat each other, how they, you know, speak to kids on the ice, how you treat the referees and how you treat um, the people that are working the body, you know, the stuff like that, right? Like, hockey culture in itself is definitely um you know it's having a shift in the right direction there to being like hey like to be more inclusive we got to treat everybody in the rink with respect and dignity you know and so um yeah i think that that's really important um you know positivity is what's gonna you know bring bring more people into the fold and you know keep them there i think that's another big thing right is like sometimes we'll have these events where you get people on the ice like i was kind of saying but how do you get them to actually come back and you know re-put the skates on and to want to invest in a year of playing hockey or two years or three years and you know what does that look like you know for that family so um and it's hard to want to um right like you can't entice a family to want to do that by just hey this is all these terrible things about the sport you should sign up and play like right no it's like right no here's these incredible things about it there is this weird part that we're getting rid of you know we got some people out here doing the work for it and it's going to take all of us but it's a great sport and you know these why you need to play and should be playing and why it's only going to benefit you and your family and, you know, everybody around you and your, your community to try and play a sport like hockey. How has your uh, hockey playing career uh, help in terms of uh, your skills uh, going into law school? Yeah. Um, law school in particular, right. Uh, the idea of perseverance and, the idea that you have to, you know, focus on, on a certain task and continue to, you know, hammer away at that task until you've accomplished it. And also knowing that, right, sometimes it uh, might not always go the way that you wanted and that's all right. And you just got to regroup and, uh, you know, try better next time. And those are kind of things that you've learned with hockey, right? And you might be a really good team or something and you make it all the way to the end and you lose and you got to deal with that. Or maybe you're, um, a really good team uh, who, you know, makes all the way and you win. You got to deal with that, right? I mean, there's just like, there's many different ways that like, you know, there's the ups, there's the downs. And I mean, that's a lot like law school, you know, there's your experience. I mean, I, I don't want to speak for everybody, but I'm, you know, I'm under the impression that not everybody's going to have, you know, every single day is going to be awesome when you're, when you're studying. And so just kind of, again, having that mental fortitude to know that I'm, I'm doing this for a, a bigger goal, you know, more, uh, like, again, a common idea that, you know, we can all be, we, you know, we all do better when we, when we all do better and that I'm bettering myself so that I can better society. Um, it helps push me through, right? So I, I really feel strongly about that and that that is why kind of, again, just I'm doing what I'm doing. Like, I, I think that for me, uh, even when I was going to write the book, right, I was in Washington, D.C. when um, the event happened with George Floyd. And I was in law school then. I was like, I'd worked for Senator Pryor. I was actually working in policy um, at a think tank and everything. And um, I'd mentioned kind of earlier, so I'm an adoptee. And uh, so I was born in Washington, D.C. And then I was in Washington, D.C., finding my biological family, reuniting with them, all that kind of stuff. So, like, that's a whole another, you know, portion of the story of my life. But, like, you know, kind of getting long story short, it's like when that happened, I, um, you know, although I was in this, other worldly space and doing my own thing. I was kind of shocked back into reality of like, this is a world that we're living in. And, you know, uh, if not me, then who, and if not now, then when? And so, you know, I made that decision that it's time that if I'm going to say that things need to be done and changed, that I need to then be the, be the change that I want to see in that, in, in society, in my community. So um, that's what I've tried to do. And that's what I've kind of stuck on. And that's the route that I'm really taking. And, you know, I want to see um, stronger bonds cross-culturally amongst kids, right? So I'm, I'm helping create that. I want to see a reduction of fear and violence in my community. So I'm trying to create that, you know, through, um, you know, programs that are going to get kids doing more productive things than maybe what they've been doing. Um, just kind of, you know, again, I could go on and on, but 
one thing I want to change, right? It's like 70% of kids at the moment are not playing sports by the time they're teenagers, right? And I think that that in itself is like, okay, what are they doing? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it sounds kind of weird. And I know that sports is everything, but it's like, oh, that was a really big part of a lot of us growing up before social media and all these video games and stuff like that is like, if you, you know, you were outside playing or you were doing this or you were doing that. So now it's like, we know that so many kids, you know, way more than 50%, 70% of kids are not, you know, engaging in youth sports once they're 13, 14 years old. And, you know, we're seeing a lot of those outcomes, I think, by, by what's happening. So, you know, my, my goal is to get people, get kids, get our youth more, engage all the way through and you know finding more productive things to spend their time on than you know going out and maybe getting into trouble which you know can you know it doesn't matter who you are what you look like what your background is like that if, if you have idle time that's what's going to happen right so it's like uh you know trying to get get people um again passionately involved in something that they want to go to every day you know they want to get themselves to the rink or you know they want to get themselves to the the court or something like that right and that's that's the ultimate goal so you know uh creating expectations in these kids so that they you know believe in themselves as much as i believe in them because i think that you know you you rise to the expectations that you know the people around you expect and if people around you expect you to be nothing you're going to be nothing so i like to tell these kids that i expect it from you that you're going to be something great and you're going to do great things because not only do i believe that but you know they need to believe that so um that's what I continue to do. And I, you know, hopefully can, again, you know, these ripple effects doesn't matter, you know, what's, what's going on in my life ultimately, but if I can change the lives of, you know, some of these people that are around me and then around them and, you know, help them feel more confident about themselves and about, you know, their abilities, then, uh, you know, that's everything that I really enjoyed with that. And I think hockey again, is a great sport, but like it's hockey is a vehicle for, you know, anything yeah. hockey can be, whatever you want to be good at in your community and belong at, um, you know, that's hockey. That, that was for me, it was hockey, but you know, for you, it could be, you know, whatever and for anybody else. So just, you know, think of it in that sense where you belong in the community that you want to belong in and you can excel at what you want to excel at. Don't let anybody tell you differently. So where do you want to see the hockey is for everybody series in the next uh, few years? Yeah. I mean, like I've given more thought to that kind of like recently, but ultimately, like, I love to see it grow, right? And, like, you know, what that what that means, like, maybe, um, you know, kind of getting it into an adaption of a screenplay or something or, like, you know, being able to, like, get kids to just – I want to – just the way that I've been able to interact with kids and stuff and the, the reactions that have come for it and the feedback and all that kind of stuff, I think that the more people that can read it and that, you know, I can get in front of or that can at least get a chance to – um, you know, absorb that lesson through the story is is the better. And so, you know, what that looks like. So, yeah, I would want to, you know, however that looks, if anybody's hearing this, you know, uh, networks or this or that, right? Just anybody that thinks that this message is worth hearing, you know, check out some of my stuff and, you know, see some of the kids that I've I've talked with. And again, just the the engagement and the the, the fun and, uh, you know, the, the the lives that are being changed, I think is, you know, un- unsurmountable. So it's just kind of like, it's, it's really powerful. And yeah, the next couple of years, you know, I want to, I want to be, um, you know, doing this in other states, you know, regularly if possible, or kind of, again, if not me, the idea of like, just this book as, you know, hockey for everybody as like a vehicle of change, um, you know, being, being used um, all over the world. And, you know, so, uh, and I think it's possible ultimately, right. Just because, the just kind of again what what has happened uh with George Floyd and uh what we have with hockey and you know, hockey can be the sport that you know we are now it's kind of focused on you know as a national country a little bit like trying to be like hey like this is a sport where you know we can do better and like not only can we do better like it's better for everybody to do better and like if we fix this sport in a sense in a good way of like then we're in a much, much better world. So it's like, here's these amazing things that we have. Let's continue to like, as we say, like push these positive stories like out so that we can continue to push away that light. So, um, you know, I hope that my story encourages other people to speak their truth. Like there's other books now coming out, other podcasts, other, you know, players that are doing these kind of things. And like, 
continue that, right? Continue that. And, you know, let's say 10 years from now, we don't see, we don't have to, you know, have like, oh, this is like a black hockey player. This is this guy is, oh my God, this guy's so good. He's so good. And then like, oh, dude, holy crap. Like, you know, he happens to also be like black, like all that kind of stuff, right? It just becomes, you know, something that's just, you know, we're all hockey players instead of hockey players are different, this and that, you know, we're not at that point yet. But like, if we all start to do our, do our part, you know, um, which is like allies like yourself and, um, you know, just continue to do this, then we're going to, we're, we're going to get there and we're going to get there sooner than later. So, I mean, you said five years, 10 years, right? Like, where's, you know, hockey is for everybody going to be like, I, I envision again, like that, just like, you know, we, we are no longer, um, you know, having to, and these initiatives are important and they're going to stay in place, but like, we're no longer having to like, you know, go out of our way to, you know, create that change. It just becomes something that is no longer systemic. And it just, you know, we have flows of players that are indigenous, people of color, black, et cetera, you know, gay, uh, straight women, just everybody, everybody's playing hockey. And, you know, anybody that's been underrepresented is no longer underrepresented. So that's what I see for hockey for everybody in the next um, five to 10 years.